Good morning. I apologize. Uh, like Joseph, I couldn't beat my computer on the stage. Huge day. I believe every life deserves the world class care. And it should be at its doorstep. So it is available to every person in our country. I was the youngest sibling of my mother. And my mother was my center of my love and affection. One afternoon in July, dark and rainy, when we all were standing outside the operation theater, where my mother was undergoing a re-operation for an avoidable complication, the door opened. The surgeon came out. He said, he has done everything, whatever is possible, to control the bleeding. Now it is up to the God. And somebody asked him, why this complication? He says, it has happened one in a million. My mother died. I couldn't understand. His one in a million was my 100%. And that is the one which made me decide that I'm going to be a surgeon. I'm going to be a doctor. And I'm going to see if I can remove that idea of percentage and have a, something which can, can give a person a most happiness. Next 16 years I studied. I did a medical college in Pune. I did my MBBS, my MS, and then I went to England for six years and I specialized in urology. I came back in 1976. I couldn't get an academic appointment. So I started a small clinic, uh, which is known as the Urology Hospital, which is all named after my mother. And I started the practice. And soon took a first step and did an endoscopic surgery in prostate known as a TURP. But soon realized that there is a limitation of doing a private practice because you have a, a you have a limitation of the main power, you have a limitation of interest, you have a limitation of the technology. And I joined my senior colleague, Dr. Virendra Desai, who was building this hospital in Nadiyad, known as the Mijubai Patel the hospital, in the head of the philanthropist. And then we started the hospital in 1978. We started with the dialysis, because that was the only thing we see and then we thought of doing a transplant. But soon we realized there was a technological explosion and there was a paradigm shift from an open, uh, from open to endoscopic, open and see to scope and see. And from endoscopic, it came to a laparoscopic in 90s and then laparoscopic to the robotic assisted laparoscopy. So slowly technology exploded making our life much more easier, demanding much more from us to cure the patient. The laparoscopy is the one well, which stands on the shoulder of the open surgical excellence, while robotic surgery stands on the shoulder of the open laparoscopic surgery. Then what is robot? The robot is an interface between the surgeon and a disease. Surgeon and patient relation is same. But robot makes you operate, remove that disease such a way that it is painless. It is more reliable, more precise, and more rewarding. And here is the console where the surgeon sits with a hand and the foot control, he can control the arms of this patient card. While this is a video card, where you have the video, you have the light source, you have the diaphragm machine, all this is connected to the arms, and then that, that can go and operate. So you sit away from the patient, you are not even washed, you are not even... Uh, 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 you are not near near the patient. This console can be... 
and then you can you can um, everything through that 3D view. Now, does it overcome over the six degrees of movement? Of course, seven degrees of freedom of movement, which is one more than the human. This is the, it is the articulated arm, and then it is movements of the instrument is even better than the and the particularly useful when operating within the tight confines of the pelvis. Now the movements, in lap movements are counterintuitive. In robotic, the movements are intuitive. And look at one thing I would tell you, that all the control is done by the finger and the thumb. You control the scissor. When you do like this, the needle goes up. When you come out, you can pick up the other one. And with this two finger, you are doing the whole surgery. And the scissor Precise. Another important thing, sometimes you develop tremor, any human being develops tremor. And when you develop tremor, when you are operating, it does interfere with your surgery. Here, even if you have a tremor, that tremor is not transmitted to the operating field. And therefore, you have a very better way of doing it. Now, why the pain is less to the patient? There is an obvious scientific reason. There is a port, and that instrument moves around the port, but it does not affect the port. So there is no pressure around the muscle. So there is no pain afterwards. If when you're doing a laparoscopy with a hand, if the port can move, when it moves, it does have an effect on the muscle, and then you have a slight pain for a few days, not more, for a few days. But robot, you don't have any pain. In the same evening, patient can sit up and start can start walking around. So why the pain is less to the to the surgeon is because we have done now more than 3,500 laparoscopic surgery. But when you hold the instrument like this, your hand start getting the fatigue, and you develop a, um, uh, either pain or you develop a trigger finger. Or if you are holding the instrument the, for two hours, then you develop a frozen shoulder. And that's a hazard to the surgeon. While in the robot, you are very comfortably sitting here and looking inside. And you are not even washed. In between, you feel a little tired, you just come out and stretch yourself. Maybe you, if you're outside, you can ask for a cup of coffee and have a coffee before you proceed further. And that's so. First, we do it in the lab. We take a fruit or a, a, a cadaveric animal where we dissect out the, the skin. Then we dissect out. After dissecting, we suture it again. So we do the practice, and then we get used to the the field. It is a compulsory in our place to spend 20 hours on the dry lab, cutting and suturing before you go to the assist the open surgery and real surgery. And when you go to the theater, you have a also which has been connected. Here you can sit. Here the mentor sits, and when you are doing it, mentor is already holding your hand. Uh, holding is telling you, do this, do that, do this. So actually the training, because this robotic surgery requires a different kind of skill. It is not the same skill as you do an open surgery. It's a different skill, and that skill has been, been, been taught. Uh, now over the last 40 years, we have the paradigm shift from open surgery which is a gold standard to a laparoscopic surgery and robotic surgery. And now here, we have seen that uh, some of the surgery, there is a not much of a difference between the laparoscopy and the robotic, because we are also conscious about the cost effectiveness to the patient as well as to the hospital. So some of the ablative surgery can be done very, very easily by laparoscopy. Even the laparoscopy is improving. Now you have a 3D in laparoscopy, you have a 4K in laparoscopy, you have articulated arms in laparoscopy, so you are improving. But at the same time, there are two places where robot cannot be replaced. One is a partial nephrectomy, when you are removing the kidney tumor from the kidney, and another is a radical prostatectomy, when you are doing the prostate cancer surgery. And that two surgery outbeats any other way of doing the surgery. And here I give you an example. This man, a young man, had a right, he had a um, solitary kidney because the other kidney was removed by the tumor. And even this other kidney had an upper pole tumor which was removed by an open surgery. So here is another one which is a radical prostate which is my favorite. Here 
is the one which I used to do, started way, way back in 90s. And I used to take four, five hours to do the surgery. And usually, when you do the surgery, it takes about two, three blood transfusion to do it. In, and it's very difficult. And here, this stitch which I'm putting it is so easily put by a robot. And this stitch putting in open surgery was so difficult. And here, I'm dissecting out uh, the, 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 the prostate. Now, the three principles. One is cancer control. You must remove the whole gland containing cancer. Second thing is a quality of life that is controlling the urination. And if you control the urination for that, if you have exercise, secondly, you control the nerves, the other, the other nerves. And you dissect out nerves from the capsule. And if it is an organ confined, you can do that. You divide the urethra and then you uh, take, out the, take out the prostate. And here, which has been preserved, and then this anastomosis between the urethra and the bladder is the most troublesome during the open surgery and laparoscopic surgery. Here, it's so beautiful. I finished within six to seven minutes, and it is a continuous suture, and you have a watertight uh, anastomosis, so that I can, now you can see, I'm distending it, there is no leak, and I can remove the catheter in five days. Previously, I used to remove it in after three weeks. Patient has to stay for that all long. And now this has made difference is that uh, the, the, the surgery is, is quick. Secondly, patient is mobile on the same day. There is no blood transfusion. Catheter is out within five days. And the cancer, cancer control is better. The preservation of the urination is better. Preservation of sexual function is better. And here is my, my uh, series. This is the largest series in India. We have done about 300 cases um, by robot. Uh, but this is a small compared to the international standard. And here, what is important to me is a five-year survival is 100 percent for the robot to use. Yes, there is a flexible robotic system. And here, you have a flexible erotoscope, which can go into the kidney to remove the stone. And again, you can see, as you move the joystick, the tip of the catheter moves. You can go down, you can go to the left, you can go to the right, you can go anywhere you like. Why? Because the kidney is such that it has got upper calyx, this is the posterior calyx, this is the posterior calyx, this is the anterior calyx, and the different calyces are there. Stone can be anywhere. And here with the flexible erotroscope, you can go into the, any of the calyces very nicely, very, without a difficulty, sitting outside on the table, and you can control it. Give you an example. This is a stone in the lower calyx, lower calyx of the kidney. This is the good functioning kidney, and here is a stone. Um, and this is a um, uh, we put a contrast to visualize the collecting system. We pass the sheath, and then through the sheath we pass a urotoscope. And this urotoscope, the stone is here. Look at the angle. With that angle, 280 degrees the angle, the scope moves, and then you can see the stone. You can see the stone, and there are the wires here, which is known as the basket. And you catch that, the stone in the basket, and then you take it out from that lower calyx. Go up in the upper calyx and park it, and park it in a beautiful position, and then pass a laser fiber. And then with a the laser fiber, you can disintegrate the stone. Now more awareness is there regarding the stone. Previously seen, large stone are disappearing. In our series now, it is only 14%. But 82% of the stones are less than 3 centimeters, and you can remove uh, with urotoscopy or a small microscopic uh, puncture, and you can clear the stone. Different ectopic kidney, uh, abnormally, congenitally abnormally kidney developed a big stone. And then uh, this stone, again, was difficult to remove by endoscopic treatment or by urotoscopic treatment because it was a different type of density. And here we use a lot um, robotic surgery dissect out the kidney, open the pelvis of the kidney where the um, stone was there, in majority of stone. And here, look at the stone. The stone is a, a matrix stone, a infected stone. And here, we removed all the stones and put into a bag directly, and then put a TIGA stand, and then close that uh, opening um, uh, so that patient has a complete clearance of the stone. And then you can see that the, the stone, which is, uh, which is completely removed and stone clear, and the double J stand to drain the kidney. Similarly, this patient has a very large stone. So, the last three, 
the 70% of the kidney donors are women, talking about the transplant. And here, uh, most of the women are either a mother, a wife, or a sister. And then initially, for many years, we used to cut open. Remember, this patient is undergoing a surgery for the benefit of their loved one. They have nothing wrong with them. And giving them that big, big scar, I think it's criminal for us. We changed that. And in 1999, for the first time in India, Dr. Inder Bidgil, uh, one of the Indian in America, came here and showed the laparoscopic robot, uh, la laparoscopic surgery that we can remove the kidney without giving them scar. This is a fresh wound. And the moment it heals, you won't see it. In 2005, we, we developed another technique, which is known as a single port to the belly, belly hole. And then the scar would not be seen at all. I think this is something we should do it for the donor who is giving, and most of the donors are the female. And here, now starting to do a recipient, also robotically. The advantage of recipient, the recipient has a scar here, and then you have to go deep down to get the artery and the vein and the anastomosis, the donor kidneys, vein and the artery. And here, we have got the vein um, uh, between the two bulldogs and opened up the, uh, uh, the vein and the anastomosis. Now here you can zoom in. You can be as near to the, to the anastomosis as you like, and your precision is beautiful. I think after looking at this, my wife says, why don't you uh, rafu the clothes? You are doing a good uh, suturing. And here, uh, 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 and here again is the artery, which is anastomosis with the, with, the, with the main artery. And once it is anastomosis, we open up, urine comes out, and then we anastomose the ureter with the, uh, with the bladder, and then the whole thing finish. Remember, when you do this, there is a CO2 we have to inflate and make the abdomen big. CO2, no organism is alive. It requires oxygen. So in this patient, most of them are diabetic, hypertensive. And there is, because of CO2, there is no bacteria remains alive and it becomes an infection free. I think this is the biggest advantage. Different facility here to train the young generation and then tell you, young generation is much smarter. If you saw that 17 year old, old did talk about the uh, whole online um, um, uh, learning and teaching and then playing with it. But Nagar showed how video can be uh, useful. And here is the thing which is most important. What is most important is teach them when they are young. So their mind is stimulated. And once their mind is stimulated, when they grow up, they become Ramanujan or somebody else. So is awareness. People are not aware they have got a disease because early disease does not have a symptoms. So therefore, we, we have made the, the people uh, uh, about the prostate and uh, prostate cancer, and we diagnose them, and then that gives you the uh, uh, awareness. Uh, and here, train has left the station, is not going to stop. And here, in uh, last five years, now we are reaching the thousand uh, robotic surgeons, and that is the change. This train currently is a deluxe, it's a top the train for the general urology. The dream to own a robot is going to remain a dream not only till the time it is converted to a gen robot by some enterprising Indian. I feel proud to be one. Thank you.